Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today we are going to talk about Excel International AS and A Levels Further Pure Mathematics 1. Today's unit is Unit 5, Matrices. So in this lecture, we are going to review what we have learned in Chapter 5. So first, what is a matrix? So matrix is a group of elements or numbers we arrange them into a fixed number of rows and columns. So if there are m rows and n columns, so we say the size of this matrix is m times n. So one example is if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is a matrix of size 2 by 3 because it has two rows and three columns. Another example is vector. Let's say if you have a vector 1, negative 1. So there are two rows and one column. So vector can be um, considered as a matrix of size 2 by 1. So if it's a two-dimensional vector. If it's a three-dimensional vector, so let's say we have A, B, C, right? So this vector size will be 3 times 1. Okay, so once we understand the size of the matrices, so we define some special type of matrices. So the first one is called a square matrix. So the square matrix has the same number of rows and columns. So the size can be written as M times M if it has M rows and M columns. So the second type of special matrix is called a zero matrix. So that means this matrix has all its elements being zero. So one example, let's say if I write this. So this is a zero matrix, and I can denote this with just a zero. OK, so the third type of matrix is called identity matrix. So this is a very important type of matrix. So first, we require this identity matrix to be a square matrix. So let's say if its size is n by n. And the second requirement is all the numbers on its leading diagonal must be 1. OK, so what does that mean? So leading diagonal is the diagonal from the upper left to the lower right, so like here. So every element here on this diagonal must be 1. OK, and the rest or the remaining elements needs to be 0. OK, so for example, if I have an identity matrix of 2 by 2, so I can denote this as I2. So its leading diagonal is 1, 1, and the rest uh, elements will be 0, 0. And if it's I3, so that means its leading diagonal will be 1, 1, 1, and the rest elements will all be Zero. Okay, so we talked about those special type of matrices, and then we define the um, operations on the matrix uh, matrices. So the first one is uh, addition. So we can say addition and subtraction. So both of them require the two matrices to have the same size. So let's say if A is a matrix with size M times N. So this one can be added to another matrix with size m times n, or it can be, uh, so or it can minus this b. Okay. So how do we do the calculation? So it's element wise. So that means it's the corresponding elements will plus or minus. So let me just write one example. So if we have a like this and b like. Um, Six, seven, right? So we want to do the addition. So the corresponding element in the first row and the first column will be this one. So we just sum them up, so it will be one. And then in the first row, second column will be this one and this one. So it's two plus three here. And the next one will be three plus six and four plus negative one. Five plus five, six plus seven. And also, we can do subtraction by using the element-wise subtraction. So the second type of operation we've learned is about the scalar multiplication. 
So what does scalar multiplication mean? So that means a number is multiplied on a matrix. So let's say k is a number, and we have a matrix which is m times n. So the, that's the size of the matrix. So what we do is we do this element-wise um, multiplication. So maybe I'll give you one example. So we have a equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And maybe k is just 2. So we want to do this scalar multiplication. So we use 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 2 times 5, 2 times 6. And then we have this um, matrix 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. OK, so that's how we do the scalar multiplication. Multiplication. OK, so this one, we have some special requirement of the sizes of the two matrices. So if the first matrix A has size M times N, so we require this matrix B to be N times L. So the number of columns of the first matrix must be the same as the number of rows of the second column. OK, so how do we do this calculation? So for each element, let's say this element here, right? So this is on the i-th row uh, of the new matrix and j's column. OK, so how do we get this element? So that will be the i-th row of A and times the j's column of B. So for the i row of A, there are n elements because A has n columns. So maybe we can write this as A1, A2, A3, until An. For the j row of B, it also has n elements because B has n rows. So it will be B1, B2, Bn. So if we type them together, the result will be A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2 and until An times Bn. So this value will be the element in the product at the i-th row and j's column. So this product uh, matrix has in total m rows and l columns. So m goes from this m here and L goes from the number of columns in B. So maybe we can just do a very quick uh, example. So let's say we have A equals to still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So A has two rows and three columns. So that means B needs to have three rows. So maybe B will just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. OK, so now we do the pro product of these two. So A, B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So B's size is 3 by 2. So we know the, uh, res the product will be 2 by 2. OK, so this element here is the first row um, and also the first column. So that means we use the first row of A, 1, 2, 3, times the first column of B, so which is 1, 2, 3. So the result will be 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 3. So it will be 1 plus 4 plus 9, so which is 14. So this number will be 14. And then this one will be the first row and a second column. So we use the first row of A, and also the second column of B. So we have 1 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 6. So in total, uh, this will be 1432. OK, so how about this one? So this one will be the second row and the first column. So we use the second row of A times the first column of B. So the answer will be 4 plus 5 times 2 plus uh, 6 times 3, so which is 18. So this is still 32. And this number will be the second row of A times the second row of B. So this will be 16 plus 25 plus 36. So the answer will be 61, so 77.
Okay, so that's how we do the uh, matrix multiplication. So I would suggest you to practice more on this calculation and get familiar with this. So in the future, you don't need to like write this thing out, right? So this is just for demonstration purpose, or if initially you are not familiar with this matrix multiplication, probably you can use this method. But once you are familiar with it, so you can just, for example, this one, look at all oh, this one, first row times the first column. So you can just time uh, these two matrices uh, like more easily. Okay, so once we learned about this multiplication, so we talked about, uh, let's say, some concepts. So the first one is about the determinant. So what is a determinant of matrix? So this concept or this quantity can only be applied to square matrix. So let's say M must be M by N, so which is a square. Um, so how do we calculate this determinant of M? So in this subject, we are only required to, talk, uh, to calculate the um, two by two matrix. So let's say if M equals to A, B, C, D. And then we have its determinant equals uh, determinant of m equals to a times d minus b times c. And then we learned about two types of matrices based on the determinant. So the first one is, is singular. So that means the determinant of this matrix is zero. And the second one we learned about is non-singular. So that means this matrix determinant is not zero. Okay, and then we talked about um, the inverse of a matrix. So inverse of a matrix M is also a matrix. We write this as M inverse. So this requires M times its inverse equals to I N. So I N is a N, uh, sorry, identity matrix of m by n uh, size. So here, in order to have an inverse, so m must be a square matrix. Okay, so that's the first requirement. And also, we require the determinant of m can't be zero. So that means m must be non-singular. Otherwise, m doesn't have an inverse. Okay, and then we learned about how to calculate the inverse of M. So we know the M equals to A, B, C, D here. So the inverse will be one over the determinant of M. Here, we just need to flip um, these two numbers on the leading diagonal. And for the other two numbers, we just change it um, to its negation. Okay, so I would like you to memorize this formula, so it's quite helpful. Okay, so after that, we talked about some properties regarding to the um, determinant and also the inverse of matrix. So the first one is for any matrix M, M times I N equals to I N times M equals to M. So that's the identity matrix. And also we talked about if M inverse M times M inverse equals to I N, then M inverse times M is also I N. And we know the matrix multiplication doesn't have the commutative law. So that means this is not always true. So you can't just switch the place when you do the multiplication. However, it has the associative law. So that means if you calculate A and B multiplication first and then times C, it's the same as A times the um, product of B times C. So just be very careful here. You, we can't like change the place. For example, I can't write this. So this is wrong, just this part for the associative part. Okay, and then we talked about for the um, A and B. So if both of them have inverse, so the inverse of A times B is the same as the inverse of B times inverse of A. So there is another very important property um, that's for the determinant. So that means the determinant of two matrices product is the same as the product of the determinants 
of these two matrices. So actually, this is very useful. So for example, if I give, give you A equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, and give you B equals to 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So I would like to know the determinant of A times B. So in this case, you don't need to do the uh, multiplication of two matrices. So what you can do is you can just calculate the determinant of A times the determinant of B. So the determinant of A is 1 times 4 minus 6, so 4 minus 6, and this is 5 times 8, 40 minus 42. So the answer will be 4. So it's much easier than you calculate the product of these two matrices first and then calculate its determinant. Okay, so that's everything for this lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. And if you have any question, please feel free to email us or you can just leave a comment under the video. Thank you.